Hi, I'm Klaus Hermann from farbspielfoto.com. Have you ever noticed strange colorful fringes around the edges in your image? These artifacts are called chromatic aberration and they can be really ugly and annoying. In this photo tip, I'm going to show you how to get rid of them. Chromatic aberration is an optical effect that comes from your lens. Essentially, it's a failure to focus all the colors of one image pixel to the exact same spot on your sensor. Now, light is usually made up of different colors or different wavelengths, and each of these colors is refracted differently by the glass in your lens. This effect is especially apparent in wide-angle lenses and at the edges of your frame. Now, building a lens that doesn't have any type of chromatic aberration is very difficult and very expensive. Therefore, chances are that your lenses will also have this problem. Now, the effect that this has on your images is that, especially the, the edges between the highlight and the darker areas, will have colored fringes that are red, green, blue or purple. This will likely become even worse if you're editing your images and if you're, for example, making an HDR from them. But luckily, there are ways of removing this in your image editing software. Now, there is a number of ways to remove color fringes. If you're working with JPEG images, your camera will already try to remove them while it encodes the JPEG from your raw data. If you're working with raw images and you're trying to create an HDR, for example, your HDR software will do something about the chromatic aberration. But whatever you do, these automated tools will never be as um, accurate as you can do it if you take care of them manually. In order to deal with color fringes effectively, I would recommend that you shoot in RAW format. Use a proper RAW converter software to convert and pre-process your images. These RAW converters have very sophisticated tools to correct any type of lens problem, including chromatic aberration. They even have knowledge of your lens and camera combination and they can use this knowledge to cure such problems in the best way that you can think of. Let's look at an example of chromatic aberration here. Here we have an exposure series taken with a Nikon D90 camera and a Sigma 10-20mm lens. This was a very common combination a couple of years ago, but you still see photographers running around with very similar gear today. Um, I'm here in Bridge, the photo management software that you get when you buy Photoshop and any other uh, Adobe um, products. And you see here the JPEG images and the RAW images that were produced by the Nikon camera. Now if I double click on this RAW image, it is opened in Adobe Camera RAW, which is the RAW converter that comes with Photoshop. And if I zoom in here on the right top corner, and let me make this 200% so that you can really see what's going on here, you can see that we have quite some pronounced color fringes here at the bottom. You see a red-purple fringe and at the top you see a greenish-blue fringe just around these corners where the dark areas meet the highlight areas. And that's a typical example. Now this is not the most expensive gear that you can buy and it's not the most expensive lens. Um, so this is very common for this type of lenses. It's a wide-angle lens, it's towards the edges of the frame, and that's where you get this type of color fringes that you see here. Before I show you how to actually correct chromatic aberration in Adobe Camera Raw, let me show you what would happen if you brought these exposures here into Photomatix to make an HDR from them. So I'm back in Bridge here and I'm going to select all three of them and then just drag them, them onto Photomatix. I already have the Photomatix window open. I'm asked, do you want to merge to HDR? Of course I want to do that. You see these three images here. I press OK. And then I'm taken to this Processing Options dialog here, which lets me um, configure some of the settings that Photomatix is going to use to merge these images. Of course I'm going to align the source images because they were shot handheld. Um, I don't remove ghosts, there are no ghosts, there's no notable noise in the images, so I'm let, letting this unticked too. The important option is down here, reduce chromatic aberrations. So that's where 
If you tick that, then Photomatics will actually attempt to cure that problem. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to show you what will happen if you don't take care of chromatic aberration before the HDR process. So I'm just pressing OK and Photomatics is doing its thing. It's converting the RAW files. So that's what you would actually do if you use Adobe Camera Raw on your RAW files. You would convert them into TIFF images um, usually. Photomatics is aligning them, merging them to HDR. This takes a minute. And then soon you will see the HDR image. And I'm going to inspect it using a function that's called show HDR viewer here. And on the left side you see this viewer window and you can always or al already sense that these colored fringes are carried over to the HDR process. Let me just press on the tone map button here to enter the tone mapping module. And I'm just going to choose the default setup to start from. And when I click up here in that area that we've looked at before, you can see that Photomatics has done quite a good job of pronouncing these color fringes uh, for us. Um, and if I take the usual settings, I'm going to ramp up the strength here a bit. I'm going to give it a bit more detailed contrast. Um, increase the luminosity setting to get some more brightness. The lighting adjustments a little bit, a little bit more to the natural side. And let's give it a bit more color saturation to really make it pop. Okay, so this is a very, very quick HDR tone mapping setting. But you can see what has happened here in this uh, magnified view. We got really, really bad color fringes here on top and at the bottom of this image. And even if they're really small compared to the size of the image, if you tone map that and upload it to anywhere in the, in the web, people will notice it. It will not be maybe immediately visible that there is color fringing, but there is something strange going on in the image and people will see that. Okay, so let's just close out of here, close the images. No, I don't want to save and go back to bridge. And now I'm going to show you how to actually fix the problem in your raw converter. So in order to actually remove this chromatic aberration, let me bring one of the images into Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going back to bridge here and I'm selecting only the normal exposure of the series. I'm double clicking on it and by double clicking bridge brings the respective image into Photoshop and Photoshop in turn recognizes that it's a raw image and opens Adobe Camera Raw. Adobe Camera Raw is the, con the raw converter that comes with Photoshop. Um, so here we are in Adobe Camera Raw. Um, and let me just zoom into one of these regions that usually has chromatic aberration. Now, before we remove it, let me show you one thing. If we move into the middle, let me zoom out here. And I just move into the middle and zoom in. You barely see anything of chromatic aberration. You seem to have a clean image here. No color fringes whatsoever. Now, if you go to the top where we just were, things change a little bit. So let me zoom into a 200%. And now you can really see these, um, these red and purple fringes down here and the green bluish fringes up here. Now what can we do to actually cure that? In Adobe Camera Raw, I'm going to the Lens Corrections tab, which is this tab with the brackets inside. And here we have three sub tabs, so to speak. One is the profile tab. And here you can um, correct the distortion of your lens and the vignetting. If you say enable lens profile, it'll recognize what type of lens you had and it will apply the corrections um, to the image. But that doesn't um, 
that doesn't cure the chromatic aberration problem. You can still see the fringes down here. So let me just switch that off once again. In manual you can do all kinds of things uh, by pushing around these uh, sliders here. But what we would like to do is go to the color tab in order to defringe our image or to remove chromatic aberration. Now you see two things here essentially. One is the remove chromatic aberration tick box up here and if you click on that Camera Raw will try to automatically analyze the image and remove any chromatic aberration that it finds. Now you can see that it did a decent job here on this image so in many cases that would be the only thing that you really need to do. But in some cases it may not work perfectly. So if I zoom into a 400% here you can still see some greenish looking uh, fringes here down at the bottom so probably this function has overcompensated for the uh, chromatic aberration that it found in the image. Um, if you want to do this in a way that actually all the fringes are gone you would rather like to work with these sliders down here. And I just turned off the remove chromatic aberration box here, the fringes are back again and um, you have down here in the defringe section you have essentially two types of sliders. Or, uh, you have the, the purple amount at the bottom or the purple section and the green section. And both sections, each of these sections is made up of two sliders. One controls the amount of defringing that you apply to the image and the other controls the range of view that you are working on. Now what does that mean? Let me show you. The purple amount, if, you, if I put that slider to zero, you see, let me just zoom in here, you see that we have a nasty purple reddish fringe down here. If I pull up that slider, you see that in that section down here, the fringe is actually starting to disappear, but up here, the fringe is still there. And the reason for that is, if I just put that back to zero, that the U or the, the color of that fringe changes slightly from the top left to the bottom right. The bottom right is more a, a purple color, the top left is more a reddish, a red color. So what you would like to do here is pull up that slider until in that case the purple is gone but the red is still there here. And the way we're going to cure that is by the purple U slider here. And you see that purple U slider has two sliders actually. And it controls the range of U that you're working on. Right now we're here in the middle. And in order to get rid of this reddish fringe here, I'm going to pull that slider slightly to the red area. And you see that immediately this red fringe starts to disappear. So we've broadened the range of view we're working on um, to actually make all the fringes down here disappear. I'm going to zoom back out and you see that this didn't affect the, the green blue parts of, this, uh, of these fringes at all here at the, at the top. And for this we have the green amount and the green U control down here. Now if I um, increase the green amount, you see that not really a lot is happening. So it seems that we can just pull that to anywhere on that scale and the fringes are still there. And the reason is of course that our U range here is too narrow. So we didn't really catch all the colors that are in these fringes. In order to do that, let's look at the fringe. I'm zooming into maximum 400% here. And it seems to be that this fringe is not green, but it's more a bluish green. It's a, it's a cyan uh, color. So what we can do is we can drag this right handle here to the outside. And you see that down here already some of this fringe has disappeared. If I drag it some more, you see that also the upper, upper part has disappeared. So now we seem to be in the right U range so that we can actually remove 
all the chromatic aberration that we have in this shot. Let me just zoom out to 200% here and look at that again. So we've already done a great job of removing these fringes here and there's barely anything to see anymore in this image. But if you inspect closer you can still see that there are some portions with there which, where there are red uh, fringes that if you're really pedantic about it shouldn't be there. It's in these shadow areas for example where there are areas with in this case a red cast. Um, now if you really want to cure that you can use the Alt or Option key on your keyboard. If you hold down the Alt or Option key and you start dragging these sliders here you see that there are black parts appearing on the image. And these black parts are drawn by Adobe Camera Raw to show you which parts you're actually affecting. So that's a very effective tool to show you how these changes you make on your sliders are actually affecting the image. And you see that we've had, it, we've had this slider at about 80 and not really much happened here. If I hold down the Alt key or Option key on Mac and drag it further to the right you see that a black patch appears where this fringe used to be. And you see that we've broadened this range even more to cover this um, particular fringe in this case. You can also do the same with the green uh, slider of course. For example here there seems to be a little bit of green uh, left. And you see if I drag this range up now don't drag it up too much because what you see here is that suddenly your U um, area, your U range starts affecting the sky and that's not what you really want. You don't want to defringe the entire sky. So just drag it up until you really cover those parts where you spotted these fringes and um, in that way you can really fine tune what you're doing here in terms of defringing. Let's looks pretty good here. So it appears that we've gotten rid of all the fringes. Let me show you the before. So I'm turning off the preview mode here. You see again these really nasty reddish, purple, green and blue fringes. And you already saw what, what happens to these if you go on post-processing this image for example in an HDR process. If I turn on the preview again the fringes are gone. So everything that's left to do is click open image for example. Adobe Camera Raw will process the image according to our adjustments and then it will open this image in Photoshop so that we can go in and uh, actually do our post-processing. Now if I'm zooming in here you see that the removal of the fringes was very effective. So that's it for this hands-on photo tip. You've seen how you can effectively remove all those nasty color fringes in your photos and really improve their quality with this little trick.